Hey everyone, good morning. Starting off today a little uh, later because we drove late last night. I'm in Davidson, Saskatchewan. Small town, about oh, hour south of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We gotta go south from here. We're gonna go through or around Regina, all the way down through Weyburn, through Estevan, to North Portal, Saskatchewan. There's a line there. We're gonna cross over the line. We're gonna be in Portal, North Dakota. From there, we're gonna keep weaseling our way down towards I-94. We're gonna get on I-94 and go all the way down as far as we can towards Minneapolis today. I'm thinking we're probably going to make it somewhere between Fargo, North Dakota and Alexandria, Minnesota, somewhere in there. Then we'll do the rest tomorrow and deliver this lumber tomorrow and then head home from there. The weather today is very nice. T-shirt weather is finally here for good, I think. It's been raining quite a bit though, but that's okay. I'll take the rain over the snow. It's 22 degrees Celsius outside right now. It's my favorite temperature is 25. It's just perfect. One second. I'm, I'm working on it. My phone's not opening up here for some reason. We're going to ask Google. The all-knowing Google. What is 22 Celsius in Fahrenheit? 22 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 71.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 71 Fahrenheit. So yeah, between 70 and 75 Fahrenheit. That is the... That is nice. Any hotter than that is way too hot. You can go a little bit cooler, but then you can't you can't do certain things like motorcycles. You can ride them in cooler weather, but at 25 degrees Celsius, everything you do outside is just comfortable. Even if you're riding your motorcycle, right? Through the wind, it's just the perfect temperature of everything. I'm not sure if we're gonna get our bike on the road this year. And obviously I got a lot going on at home that are uh, that's gonna be taking up my time. We'll see what happens. All right, let's get going, shall we? Tug on our trailer a little bit just to make sure it's gonna come with us. I don't want to leave it here. I, I need it. Two hundred meters. Turn left on Lewis Rail Trail, Highway 11, and then make a U-turn if possible in 110 meters. So we just put in a hundred liters, uh, 26 US gallons. Price per liter here is a dollar dollar seventy. Cost me $170 Canadian. That should get me, yeah, that'll get me down to Minot, North Dakota. It's about a five hour drive from here. I got just below half a tank. Uh, that's got to even out though, because I just put the hundred liters into one side and then the fuel gauge isn't exactly even for a little while till because the tanks are connected, if you didn't know this. Tanks on both sides of my truck are connected. If you fill one up, they slowly level out until they're both at the exact same. But the fuel gauge is only on one side. 
I have a fuel gauge for my passenger side too, but it's not working. But uh, I have a fuel gauge that works for my driver's side and it all evens out anyway. So it does give me an accurate reading of how much fuel I have. It just, I put everything in the driver's side now. So it goes up and then it'll come down just a little bit as it evens out with that side. I gotta get that other fuel gauge fixed sometime. I bought the truck like that and he told me it was like that. It doesn't bother me, that's why I haven't fixed it yet. I have, the, I have a fuel gauge. Most trucks only have one fuel gauge, right? And that fuel gauge is in one tank or the other. It doesn't... Oh, well, it wasn't a priority to me, but yeah, it is on the list of little things to get done. All right, let's go to Minot. Why not? All right, now let's get going, for real. get lost in one of these potholes. It's like a black hole. It'll suck you right in. You'll never come back out. Nice and easy. Can I even get out this way? I'm gonna have to wait for that guy. Oh, he's got a pike as well. Oh, okay. Plugging everything up here. Anytime, bud. I understand you don't want to fall into one of these black holes, but looking pretty smooth where you are. Thank you. 
but it's got to last a long time, you know? I rarely ever use it all. I rarely, rarely ever do. Even climbing hills, I won't have it flat on the floor. No, I'd rather slow down, let the engine just gently take me up the hill instead of just cranking it. But if I want it, it's there. Yes, I cut it pretty close. I don't like running my fuel that low. <laughs> it made me a little uncomfortable. But we made it. We're here. And I've actually decided to not fill up here. But why not fill up in my not? Well, I looked at the fuel prices. Fuel prices here are $4 a US gallon, US, converted into Canadian currency and liters that equals $1.60 per liter Canadian. That is more expensive than fuel was in Saskatchewan. And it's about the same price as it is in Manitoba. So remember a, a 
few months ago, I was talking about the huge price gap between US fuel and Canadian fuel. It was 50 cents difference between the two. Now it's down to zero here in Minot. I looked at that, I was like, huh, usually it's more expensive up there. Should have filled up up there. So I looked at my, my Flying J app and I looked at the prices down the road in Fargo. It was three ninety four nine, so five cents cheaper per gallon. I looked down in Alexandria. It was three seventy five nine, and then I looked down in St. Cloud, Minnesota, right outside of Minneapolis, and it's three sixty four nine, so three sixty five U S per U S gallon, and that equals a dollar thirty Canadian per liter, thirty cents cheaper per liter in St. Cloud, and I'm going to be buying close to six hundred liters, so that equals almost oh, so over one hundred and fifty dollars savings if I fuel up over there. So I'm only going to fuel up one tank here. I'll fill it right all, right all the way up so we have uh, about a half tank of fuel here. And hopefully that'll get me down there. If not, I might have to top up a little bit in Fargo or Alexandria. Just a little bit. Just give it, a, just give it enough. And then I'm going to fill up those tanks completely in St. Cloud, Minnesota on my way back home. Because i got to go right past St. Cloud. got to unload this lumber. And then I'm going to be coming empty back past there later tomorrow. That's when I want to fuel up in St. Cloud all the way to the top. So we're just going to fill up one tank here. It's very slow here. There's only me and one other, three other guys here. So before it starts getting busy, I better get out there, pump my fuel. I'm going to go and park after that and go and have a shower, clean myself up, grab some food, and we'll make our way down the road. Still trying to get past Fargo, North Dakota today. I'm actually doing the calculations here. I think I was a little bit off on the conversions before. Fuel here is 399.9 USD. That's 540 Canadian. You go $5.40 divided by 3.75. That's $1.43 per liter here, Canadian. Not $1.60. So it it is still a little bit cheaper than in Saskatchewan. My mistake. I must have punched something in wrong before. A little bit cheaper here, but I still only filled up one tank put in 401 liters or 106 US gallons just one tank so that's how empty they were uh, so it's dollar 42 it is a dollar 30 it's still a dollar 30 uh, <coughs> pardon me down in st. cloud per liter so that's a savings of 13 cents per liter and if I buy 500 liters I'm still saving $65 so it's not the big hundred and fifty dollar savings that I thought it was by going all the way down it but it is still savings you know you do that twice a week it's 120 dollars a week it's four or five hundred dollars a month or so in your pocket and with the cost of groceries nowadays that could feed your family for uh, oh i don't know five hundred dollars i could feed your family for what a few days <laughs> could put food on the table anyway so yeah i just wanted to correct that error i had miscalculated before i will blame my calculator faulty calculator six guests in line for a shower <sighs> well that's disappointing I'm not waiting around for that we got some rain showers coming in not that, that matters but I'm just gonna run in grab some food and we'll see maybe we can fuel at uh, in Fargo or at Alexandria instead this Flying J is always so disappointing. The service inside is always so terrible. And I try not to focus on that kind of stuff. And if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. But I want to let you guys know, if you're coming through here and you want to stop for a shower or a coffee, you're probably best to skip this Flying J. This Flying J has terrible service. Every single time I've been here, since I can't even remember, every single time, showers are all dirty, empty, but dirty. Staff are standing around on their phones or visiting with their friends that are here for some reason. And when you go and ask them, hey, there's seven people, like including me, there'd be seven people waiting for a shower. They give you attitude. This guy gave me attitude. He's like, yes, so? Um, do you have anyone cleaning showers? They're out of order. I'm like, oh, out of order. All right, so I go to the back there, and there's a, another staff member back there chatting with her friend in the back by the showers. So I asked her, I was like, hey, are these showers broken, or are they out of order? She's like, oh, no, no, no. Uh, it's the guy at the front. It's his responsibility to clean them. 
I was just talking to him. He said that they're out of order. He's like, nah, he just doesn't want to clean them. Huh. And then I went to go grab a coffee, right? All of their coffee was empty. Every single one. Empty. And so I go to the front desk and I say, hey, just so you know, you're all out of coffee. <laughs> he looks at me, looks up from his phone because he's scrolling through social media on his phone behind the counter. He wasn't even making eye contact with me when I approached the counter. Looking at his phone, scrolling through whatever Facebook or TikTok or something. Looks up, shrugs, looks down, back down at his phone, keeps scrolling. And this was the head guy, according to the other staff. This was the head guy in charge in the store here. I'm a little bit out of breath because uh, I had to run to the truck across the parking lot because it started pouring rain. Apologize for my heavy breathing right now, but... Huh. Very disappointed. And I usually don't focus on stuff like that, but this has been consistent. This isn't the first time this has happened to me. This has happened to me every single time I stop here. Last time I got a shower here, but I had to convince them to clean one of them for me. They have four showers in there. They're always all dirty, empty and dirty. I can convince them to clean one and it wasn't very good. He pretty much just swept the floor and said, hey, there you go. Give me some clean towels and there you go. Huh. Very disappointing. So I don't know where this video is going to make it to, but... If you have any influence with the people at Flying J, the management here in Minot needs a little chat. They need someone to give them a little bit of a swift kick in the pants. A nice, gentle one. Of course, we don't call for any, any anything other than that on this channel. What I mean is they need a talking to. Please call them. If you're in charge, call them and ask them what is going on. Every single time I stop here, coffee's all out, showers are all empty and dirty, and no one wants to clean them, and they give you attitude. And they're on their phones the whole time, or they're hanging out with their friends in the back that are not working here, but here to visit while their friend is working. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. Hopefully, uh, maybe this can make it to the right people somewhere. Because, uh... Why not? Come on, man. Come on. All I wanted was a coffee and a shower. There was just six people that were waiting for one of the four showers to be cleaned. So had they been cleaned, there would have been no lineup at all. People have been waiting here for hours already to get into a shower. And so I just told him, you know what, just go to Fargo, go to the next one. This guy d is not going to clean it. He said straight up, he's not going to clean it. He told me they're out of order, but really he just doesn't want to. I'm not going to let it ruin my day. Let's go. Let's drive through the thunderstorm. Okay, let's go take our business somewhere else. raining pretty good. You know, another, another thing I've noticed whenever I show up here in Minot at the Flying J, it's pouring rain. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I would have preferred to have had a shower in the actual shower though, not outside. Maybe one day, right? Maybe one day. If you want my advice, don't stop by here at the Flying J and Minot. Just go right on by. I'll probably stop here again because it's a convenient place for fuel, but I'm not going to count on getting a shower or coffee or spend any money inside. I just, I can't justify it. I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with it. there today. A little moist. Well, we made it to Fargo. This was our goal to get past this. I have 54 minutes left on my clock. And we're going to keep trucking. I might just make it to Roth Bay, Minnesota instead of Alexandria, but that, that does meet my target of between here and Alexandria. I was kind of hoping to make it all the way to Alexandria, but I don't I don't think I can make it in 53 minutes. But it is what it is. At least we made our goal, right? I'm at 
three kilometers driven today already. About 600 miles. I'm about ready to uh, call it a day. I'll go a little ways into Minnesota here. I'm thinking, like I said, Rothsay. I like that little truck stop they have there. It's nice and quiet. It's probably where I'm going to pull in. We have 12 minutes to park the truck. Looks like there's a few parking spots here available. So I'm parked in the back here. I decided on a different spot again, like I often do. <laughs> the other spot seemed a little sketchy. There's a chance it could have been backed into or had a trailer drag over me in the morning. Hmm, probably not, but I didn't want to take the chance. So I came to this spot here. So there's this huge area in the corner that can't really be used, but if they do it properly, two trucks could back in between here and park back here but probably just one it's hard to get these corners filled up sometimes you know without people getting blocked in but this way you can see when i wake up in the morning i have a clear shot straight out and if anybody were to want to come and park right beside me here too they could they could just pull up right over there and then back straight in here and there's no reason why they should back into me because when they're backing in here I would be on their driver's side not on their blind side there's no reason that they should back into me now if they backed in beside him over there they could do that as well but then he would be on their passenger side and he's risking you know because the passenger side is less visible than the driver's side usually and that's it folks thanks for joining me today we're in Rothsay, Minnesota. Tomorrow we deliver our lumber to Lakeville, Minnesota, which is just south of Minneapolis, like I've said. And then we're going home empty. It's time to get home, it's Mother's Day this weekend. What did you do for Mother's Day? So hit that like button, the subscribe button, that's the most important one, and I'll see you tomorrow.